Chapter 7 Do no evil, so shall no harm come unto thee. Depart from the unjust, and iniquity shall turn away from thee. My son, sow not upon the furrows of unrighteousness, and thou shalt not reap them sevenfold. Seek not of the Lord preeminence, neither of the king the seat of honor. Justify not thyself before the Lord, and boast not of thy wisdom before the king. Seek not to be judge, being not able to take away iniquity, lest at any time thou fear the person of the mighty, and stumbling block in the way of thy uprightness. Offend not against the multitude of a city, and then thou shalt not cast thyself down among the people. Bind not one sin upon another, for in one thou shalt not be unpunished. Say not, God will look upon the multitude of my oblations, and when I offer to the Most High God, he will accept it. Be not faint-hearted when thou makest thy prayer, and neglect not to give alms. Laugh no man to scorn in the bitterness of his soul, for there is one which humbleth and exalteth. Devise not a lie against thy brother, neither do the like to thy friend. Use not to make any manner of lie, for the custom thereof is not good. Use not many words in a multitude of elders, and make not much babbling when thou prayest. Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry, which the Most High hath ordained. Number not thyself among the multitude of sinners, but remember that wrath will not tarry long. Humble thyself greatly, for the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and worms. Change not a friend for any good by no means, neither a faithful brother for the gold of Ophir. Forgo not a wise and good woman, for her grace is above gold. Whereas thy servant worketh truly, entreat him not evil. Nor the hireling that bestoweth himself wholly for thee. Let thy soul love a good servant, and defraud him not of liberty. Hast thou cattle? Have an eye to them, and if they be for thy profit, keep them with thee. Hast thou children? Instruct them, and bow down their neck from their youth. Hast thou daughters? Have a care of their body, and shew not thyself cheerful toward them. Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter, but give her to a man of understanding. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. Honor thy father with thy whole heart, and forget not the sorrows of thy mother. Remember that thou wast begotten of them, and how canst thou recompense them the things that they have done for thee? Fear the Lord with all thy soul, and reverence his priests. Love him that made thee with all thy strength, and forsake not his ministers. Fear the Lord, and honor the priest, and give him his portion, as it is commanded thee, the first fruits, and the trespass offering, and the gift of the shoulders, and the sacrifice of sanctification and the firstfruits of the holy things. And stretch thine hand unto the poor, that thy blessing may be perfected. A gift hath grace in the sight of every man living, and for the dead detain it not. Fail not to be with them that weep, and mourn with them that mourn. Be not slow to visit the sick, for that shall make thee to be beloved. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end, and thou shalt never do amiss. Chapter 8 Strive not with a mighty man, lest thou fall into his hands. Be not at variance with a rich man, lest he overweigh thee, for gold hath destroyed many, and perverted the hearts of kings. Strive not with a man that is full of tongue, and heap not wood upon his fire. Jest not with a rude man, lest thy ancestors be disgraced. Reproach not a man that turneth from sin, but remember that we are all worthy of punishment. Dishonor not a man in his old age, for even some of us wax old. Rejoice not over thy greatest enemy being dead, but remember that we die all. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs, for of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learned of their fathers. 
and of them thou shalt learn understanding, and to give answer as need requireth. Kindle not the coals of a sinner, lest thou be burnt with the flame of his fire. Rise not up in anger at the presence of an injurious person, lest he lie in wait to entrap thee in thy words. Lend not unto him that is mightier than thyself, for if thou lendest him, count it but lost. Be not surety above thy power, for if thou be surety, take care to pay it. Go not to law with a judge, for they will judge for him according to his honor. Travel not by the way with a bold fellow, lest he become grievous unto thee, for he will do according to his own will, and thou shalt perish with him through his folly. Strive not with an angry man, and go not with him into a solitary place, for blood is as nothing in his sight, and where there is no help, he will overthrow thee. Consult not with a fool, for he cannot keep counsel. Do no secret thing before a stranger, for thou knowest not what he will bring forth. Open not thine heart to every man, lest he requite thee with a shrewd turn. Chapter 9 Be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom, and teach her not an evil lesson against thyself. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. Meet not with an harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. Use not much the company of a woman that is a singer, lest thou be taken with her attempts. Gaze not on a maid, that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Give not thy soul unto harlots, that thou lose not thine inheritance. Look not round about thee in the streets of the city, neither wander thou in the solitary place thereof. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman, and look not upon another's beauty. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. For herewith, love is kindled as a fire. Sit not at all with another man's wife, nor sit down with her in thine arms, and spend not thy money with her at the wine, lest thine heart incline unto her. And so, through thy desire thou fall into destruction. Forsake not an old friend, for the new is not comparable to him. A new friend is as new wine. When it is old, thou shalt drink it with pleasure. Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in, but remember they shall not go unpunished unto their grave. Keep thee far from the man that hath power to kill, so shalt thou not doubt the fear of death, and if thou come unto him, make no fault, lest he take away thy life presently. Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares, and that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. As near as thou canst, guess at thy neighbor, and consult with the wise. Let thy talk be with the wise, and all thy communication in the law of the Most High. And let just men eat and drink with thee, and let thy glorying be in the fear of the Lord. For the hand of the artificer the work shall be commended, and the wise ruler of the people for his speech. A man of an ill tongue is dangerous in his city, and he that is rash in his talk shall be hated. Chapter 10 A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers, and what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. In the hand of God is the prosperity of man, and upon the person of the scribe shall he lay his honor. Bear not hatred to thy neighbor for every wrong, and do nothing at all by injurious practices. Pride is hateful before God and man, and by both doth one commit iniquity. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man, 
For such an one setteth his own soul to sail, because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. The physician cutteth off a long disease, and he that is today a king tomorrow shall die. For when a man is dead, he shall inherit creeping things, beasts, and worms. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God, and his heart is turned away from his Maker. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities, and overthrew them utterly. The Lord hath cast down the thrones of proud princes, and set up the meek in their stead. The Lord hath plucked up the roots of the proud nations, and planted the lowly in their place. The Lord overthrew countries of the heathen, and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He took some of them away, and destroyed them, and hath made their memorial to cease from the earth. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed, and they that love him an honorable plant. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. Among brethren he that is chief is honorable. So are they that fear the Lord in his eyes. The fear of the Lord goeth before the obtaining of authority, but roughness and pride is the losing thereof. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is the fear of the Lord. It is not meet to despise the poor man that hath understanding, neither is it convenient to magnify a sinful man. Great men and judges and potentates shall be honored, yet is there none of them greater than he that feareth the Lord. Unto the servant that is wise shall they that are free do service, and he that hath knowledge will not grudge when he is reformed. Be not overwise in doing thy business, and boast not thyself in the time of thy distress. Better is he that laboreth and aboundeth in all things than he that boasteth himself and wanteth bread. My son, glorify thy soul in meekness, and give it honor according to the dignity thereof. Who will justify him that sinneth against his own soul? And who will honor him that dishonoreth his own life? The poor man is honored for his skill, and the rich man is honored for his riches. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in riches? And he that is dishonorable in riches, how much more in poverty?